Spot Max, Chris from Hagen Factory. This week's video, a 500 Velo that I would love to own. Uh, the old man's gone through it, a mate of ours picked it up, uh, wouldn't run, uh, Dad's gonna sort that out for him, so let's have a look. Rigid frame girder for MSS 500 Velo, which I think is a pretty desirable sort of bike to have actually. Yeah, I like it. And this bike is just so original. It's uh, got so many original fittings like the mud guards, toolbox, oil tank, front brake, plate, mud guards, forks, headlight, everything's original. Even the, the Dowdy um, damper knob. Very, very original bike. Yeah, it's bloody nice. Yeah, it is a nice bike, it really is. But uh, the guy purchased the bike and it wouldn't go. So he bought it here and uh, we had the magneto recondition, put that on, because it had no spark at all. And it still wouldn't go. So uh, I took the rocket box off, took the timing cover off, pulled the timing gears out found that the cams were about 16 degrees out, the, the valve timing. Um, so I altered the, uh, the cams in the cam wheel. Now we'll get to the cam wheel now. This is what the cams look like. And we've had this discussion once before. We we'll have. Through it again. We'll just reinforce the fact yep. that this has got to be right. And that's what a cam wheel looks like. Those cams got a slow taper and so is that hole and they press together as a locking taper. Yep. So it's really um, secure. They're quite secure. I've never seen any of them come loose. I believe they have, but I've never seen it. So what we what we found with this was um, with the cams that are now back in this motor is you might be able to see that mark there. Yep, we can see that. Right. -o. Well, that mark with that one pointing that way. That mark has to go through the centre of the base circle of the cam. Yes. That's the uh, exhaust cam. So it's got to go straight through the base circle of that cam. Now that one, even though it's, it, this one's obviously been out, but it's a, still a tooth out. Yeah. I reckon it's a tooth. So it's 16 degrees advanced, is it? It's, it's eight, degree, eight degrees. Eight degrees yeah. advanced. Yeah. So, but these cams are unknown. They're not marked. So they're probably an aftermarket cam. They could even be a bit of a performance grind cam, I'm not sure, but um, anyway. That was just a lot out of stock. Yeah, it was just, yeah, just came out of a box of parts. But um, but they're, they're all right, they're quite usable. Uh, it's, so that's what that's about. But they will run. A few oh, they, yeah, oh, they'll run, they'll run, no problem. But they run better when they're right. Oh, of course. Yeah. But they still will run. Oh, yeah, And yeah. probably... I don't know, the amount you've seen lately, probably 50% of them are wrong, aren't they? They are, yeah. and um, a customer that had his Mac here a while ago, it was 90 degrees out. Yeah, I don't know how that ran. I, I did, and it ran, but it was... Flat. Absolutely flat, and the motor was rattling. Yeah. It was, it was no good. And yeah. uh, so we went through all the drama with his and got it so that it starts nice and runs nice. Yep, so um, the other issue with this too was... Uh, the uh, the rocker adjusting screws, um, one of them was way too short and the nut was underneath, it was upside down and the other one was badly worn so I've, I had a couple of newies in stock so I put those in, I used just the second hand nuts back on them. Okay, with this valve set it has got some clutch issues. Now the clutch was slipping. Now if you adjust your clutch up and it's not slipping, but it won't free, you'll find that the lever won't pull into the handlebars. Yes. Which it has to. It has to. You have to get a full one inch throw on the lever. Yeah, to make full the clutch throw, free. yeah. Right. So what that means is, uh, it could be a couple of reasons for it. There could be like, say maybe three reasons for that. Um, the first one is that the nut on the main shaft on the other side of the gearbox has come loose, which it hasn't. I've taken the, okay. the retainer ring out and checked it. 
The other reason is there's a retaining ring for the big main bearing in the back of the gearbox has unscrewed itself, which is not uncommon. It has, I've seen that a few times. We have spoken about that before. Yeah, yep. I have seen that happen a few times, so there's, there's a chance that. Or well, the other thing is the clutch is totally worn out and we're just not getting the throw on it. Yeah, okay. So that's, I'm tipping that it'll be the clutch is worn out, but if we're lucky, it might be just the rings come undone. Yeah, okay. So once that's apart, we'll do another video on that. And, okay. And you can tell us yeah. what you found. And... Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, back is a Valaset clutch adjusting tool. It's a bolt, 5 16 bolt. It's a quarter bolt, actually, with a flat ground on one side. And you poke that in through the hole in the sprocket, and that engages with the adjusting nut. And you just turn the back wheel, and you adjust it. Uh, you can release it or engage it more by turning it either way yes if yep. you want to if you want to put more tension on the springs you turn it um um anti-clockwise like if the bike's going forward yeah that winds the adjusting nut out and puts okay. more tension on the springs yeah if you want to go the other way you can pop it in and go back the other way oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah that's good now uh, he'll be really wrapped with this i know he's a bit excited by it so we might be able to do a demo here it'll be good to see it uh on the road you know so in the hole in the sprocket there, yep. yep. And then you turn the bolt through the hole of the sprocket, engaged into the nut. Yep. Now, yep. what we'll do is we'll back her off a bit. So we'll wind the we'll wind the wheel backwards like this. Just, okay. bump, it, just bump it backwards. Yep. And that's back in the clutch. Now, back off. That'll nearly come into the handle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. She's nearly in. Yep. More. Okay, that's very close. I'll do a bit more. There you go. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, it's so not in. It's not coming, still not in far enough. Yeah, but it's probably coming to another ten mil more than what it was, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah straight to the bars. Right. Uh, now that'll because the clutch is worn. Yes. That'll probably slip. At that. Yeah. Right. It might free, but it'll slip. And that's what it was doing last time, wasn't it? Yeah. It's slipping more than nothing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So it's a good chance the clutch is worn out there. Yeah. Clutch is worn out there. Yeah. So what we've got to do is pull it apart. Um, another thing that can happen to those is the little push rod, which is only that long. Yeah, it's not very big. Yep. If they get a bit worn, it doesn't take much so that they don't get enough throw. Yeah, okay. So you run out of travel in the lever before uh, the rod's pushed far enough. Yeah. So um, you'll have to strip it down and rebuild the clutch. Yeah, excellent. Which is a, oh, it's a bit of an operation, but you can buy all the new parts and everything, so it's yeah. pretty good. And you've done it before, so oh, it's not yeah, a big yeah. deal. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Um, the clutch. We're having a bit of trouble with the clutch slipping and dragging. And that, that usually means that uh, it hasn't got enough throw on the lever. It has to throw right to the handlebars and you need about one inch cable pull to get these clutches to work correctly. Now, it wasn't doing that. And so I, I took the retaining ring off the other side uh, to make sure that the main shaft nut was tight because that would allow the clutch to move. And that was tight. So I've removed the cover and taken the sprocket off. Now, this nut here, that one there, yes. people tend not to, I've gone through this before in the other videos, people tend not to tighten that right up. And I have absolutely no idea why, but they just won't tighten it up. Well, it's probably a bit confusing because when that nut is tight, it doesn't look like there's enough, any room for the clutch to throw. Yep, I suppose, like it, unless you know what you're sort of looking at. Well, it looks like it bottoms out, doesn't it, really? Yep. yep. Well, so what what I did was I thought, well, I'll just check that and make sure that that's not loose. Because if that is loose, all that's doing is it's pushing the whole clutch up, up, out and not separating the plates. Yes. Yep. So I had a bit of a tap at it, and guess what? It was loose. So uh, I've got three full turns out of it, and I've knocked it up. Now, some models of these, not even, I hear that so it's as tight as, so you've got to hear a whack. That's tight. Now... Some of these have a locking tab, some don't. And I do believe they need the locking tab. 
Yes. But anyway, we've knocked that one up towards. So now we've got full throw on the lever. So this clutch might be as bad as we thought. No, 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 no. Which is fantastic. That is for everybody, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just show you what happens here. Um, hang on, I'll just come around. Get in there. Now, yeah, right. that is turning the motor over. Yes. No problem. Now, pull the clutch right in, it's free. Yeah, okay. So, now when you let it go, sometimes it'll just. Yeah, she's just slipping a little bit like it's supposed to, right on top dead centre. So just. Pull the decompressor in, just let it go over, and then pick it. So, you, do you want to just explain that, what it says in the manual? Yeah, in the manual, it says uh, when you adjust your clutch, when you stand on the Kickstarter on full compression, it should slip ever so slightly. Yeah. And that's the that means you've got correct adjustment. Do you remember what manual you got that out of? Um, no, I don't. No. <laughs> Um, was out of one of the books. Yep. And that's what they say. So, um, so things have changed overnight. So yeah. yesterday was, yep. without pulling it apart, it was possible that it needed a full clutch rebuild. Yeah, now it might not. But things are looking a bit more yeah. positive today. Yeah, so another we'll just issue here, see another, how it goes. Another little issue we've got here is um, the oil that's come out of the yes. Yeah, box. That probably wouldn't help much either. No, that's it's not going to help. It's a fair mixture of oil and water. It is. And it's very thick oil, yep. too, which... Um, I did bring over four litres of that somewhere. Oh, yeah, there's some here as well. Yeah. yeah, bring over a bottle from the last one we did. Yeah. So, um, change the oil in that as well. And uh, I'll put the rest of the bike back together and we'll take it for a ride around the house. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. So we'll be here for that. We'll get to see that happen. Yep. And, but uh, this is just a lovely and uh, it deserves to be running right and ridden. Well, as everyone knows, I've grown up riding this stuff and everyone wants a Thruxton or a Viper or a Venom or something. <laughs> yeah. And I like all those things, but I think this is just fantastic. I think if I did more riding and club stuff, this is the bike I'd like to have. Yeah, yeah. I think. You know, they're very desirable bike to yeah. have. Yeah. They pull like a train. You got so much torque. They've got probably more torque than most other singles. Uh, they were designed for sidecar use. We do have one, and we haven't done a story of it. We've got one in a swing arm frame. Yeah, we have. I've grafted one into a swing arm frame with a Venom gearbox. So we might drag that out one day and do a bit of a story on that as well. Yeah, we could. Yeah. yeah. But um, hasn't seen the light of day for about ten. These years. things too, they'll they'll waft along the highway at you know fifty five mile an hour all day. Yeah. And um, they they'll crack eighty mile an hour. Yeah. So. Um, I'm just amazed how they pull. They're not a bad. Yeah, they. You don't have to go down the gear to climb an L, do you? No, just don't have to ride an option. the engine yeah um, I found a few quite a few little things wrong with the engine which the cams weren't pressed into the cam wheel in the correct position yep we got that on the last video yeah, okay which yep. that's not uncommon either yes uh, you find a few like that so I rectified that um, it had some very dodgy tappet adjusters in so I replaced the tappet adjusters um, I fitted a new mark 1 concentric carby a 30 mil one um, it's got a uh, number three slide to 280 main jet, which is a really good starting point for these bikes. Yep, it's in there nice. And I uh, haven't even put the fuel tank back on it, but I've tipped a bit of fuel down the carb and I gave it a kick and away it went. Yeah, fantastic. So, and we kicked our guts out, didn't we? <laughs> Last time trying to get to go and it wouldn't go. Yeah. So there was obviously a few things wrong. Exactly. But um, originally the, the Magneto uh, wasn't sparking, but the owner of the bike uh, sent the Maggie off and uh, got it done, and it seems to be quite a good job. Right, 
same as every other week. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell everybody. Let's bring Hagen's back.